This video will briefly describe about the second topic of requirements engineering and software modeling course on the system and context. Let's recap on topic one first. In previous topic one, you have been introduced to the introduction and foundation of requirements engineering. By now, you should understand and able to define what is requirements, requirements engineering and also stakeholder. The second part of topic one introduced to you the importance of requirements engineering as initial stage in the overall SDLC. Okay, the third part of topic one introduced to you the four major activities in requirements engineering consists of elicitation, documentation, validation and negotiation and finally management. Okay. Lastly, in topic 1, you have been introduced to the three classification of requirements in terms of the functionality, the quality and lastly the constraint. Okay now, what will you learn in this topic 2? This topic 2 going to introduce you on some important definition and a concept for system and its related context. So system basically will be deployed in its context or in its environment. Understanding on this topic 2 will help you to identify the grey zone or the unclear areas in the system and its context which is very much critical to be observed when we start the requirements elicitation activities. Lastly, in topic 2, you will be introduced on how to document the system context. Practically, software engineer use structured or object-oriented approach to document the system context. I'm going to explain the important definitions for this topic too by explaining the concept in the following videos in part 2. You may refer the 7 important definitions in your slide text. In this second part of topic 2, you will be introduced to the concept of system and its context what is and how to identify the grey zone for a system and its context. This slide visualizes to you the basic concept of system and its context. As of an engineer to be, you must aware that you are going to develop a quality product which is a system, a software or application for your clients in their context or the company business environment. Why you need to identify the system and context during requirements engineering? This is because we, wa we want to identify the relevant and irrelevant parts of the environment for a systematic elicitation for the system to be developed. For example, Moodle e-learning is one of many systems that heavily used in the UTM's context. UTM is an organization that basically run its business environment of higher education domain. Therefore, a system is always embedded in its particular context or relevant environment. As for the context, it influences the purpose of the system or the requirements that the system must fulfill its user. In simpler word, a requirement is always defined for a particular context or its relevant domain environment. Another important term in this topic too is system boundary. All developed system have its own boundary. System boundary separate the system to be developed from its environment. So when the system boundaries are defined, the scope of the system is determined. What is scope? Scope are aspects that can be changed and designed during system development. Scope are also aspects belong to the environment which 
cannot be altered during development and may provide constraint for the system to be developed. From the previous definition of system boundary and scope terminologies, as well as the basic concept explanation on system domain, system context can be properly defined as relevant parts of the system environment that should be observed and investigated further in order to understand the proposed system requirements. This slide shows you example of accounting system in its context. So we have accounting system that being deployed or operated in its environment of manufacturing industry in Germany. So we have here manufacturing as the accounting system context in the Germany. Okay, so to understand about the, the system context, for this example number one, we have to consider is there any specific German laws okay, or the specific business need or business process of this manufacturing industry okay, that contribute further about the system context. Okay, this is second example of accounting system but for different domain, financial companies in the USA. So we have the accounting system again but in different contexts which is for the financial. Okay, financial in the USA. So to understand the system context, we have to consider what is or what are the laws okay imposed by the USA government towards this financial company maybe for example for the banking okay so this slide shows the third example of how accounting system okay being deployed for different domain of shipping company in the china okay so we have accounting system accounting system okay but the domain is shipping okay and the bigger environment is the china so to understand context for this particular accounting system we have to consider what are the relevant chinese laws okay and what are the business needs maybe what are the process okay for example the logistic the logistic process in the shipping companies that give some impacts on how this accounting system being used by the community inside this system context. Hopefully at this moment you already understand on the system context concept because we going to uh, look further on the definition of what are the objects inside the system context. So system context objects are basically parts, the relevant parts or aspects which belong to the system environment and influence to the requirements for the proposed system to be developed. There are at least five categories of objects that can be identified and observed in the system context. First, people or stakeholder which interacting with the system. Second, system in operation, for example, external software or hardware which interfacing with the system. Third is the process, for example, technical process or business activities that occurs in the domain environment. Fourth object is the events that relate to what is happening in the domain environment. And finally, the documents. For example, system documentation or any specific laws and standard that the company have to comply with in their business environment. This slide visualizes the examples of objects for e-learning system in the UTM context. First, the stakeholder. 
we have students, lecturers, faculty administrator, which play as the end user that interact directly with the e-learning system. Second, the system in operation. We have IMSWeb or maybe Google Map API as external system and also some hardware such as server, touchpoint, printer that also interfacing with the e-learning system. The third object is the business process that can be observed in the UTM learning context, for example, the student course registration process. Fourth object is the events, the occurrence of new semester or session, graduation, convocation, are the examples of events that are happening in the UTM e-learning system context. And finally, the fifth object is document. Moodle user manual, related documents on regulations such as tuition fees, program syllabus for undergraduate or postgraduate program are the example of documents that can be investigated in the UTM e-learning system context. Interfaces is another definition that you should understand for this topic too. So what is interface? Interface are basically the interaction between the system and environment such as the people, software, hardware which impose specific constraint or limitation that becomes as additional sources of requirements for the proposed system to be developed. Let's look what are the interfaces in terms of people, hardware, software from the perspective of Moodle e-learning system in the UTM context. So we have these students, lecturers, faculty administrator as the direct stakeholder. And we also have IMSWeb as external software that interfacing with e-learning system. And some hardware, for example, server, touchpoint and printer are interfacing directly with e-learning system. Another important concept that should be clearly understand in this topic too is basically the grey zones. So what is basically grey zone from requirements engineering perspective? Grey zone is defined as identified aspects in the scope of environment or system context which is unclear or uncertain that lead to the vague separation whether they have a relation to the system or not. There are two areas of grey zones between the system and its context. First, the grey zone of the system boundary. Second, is the grey zone of the context. At the beginning of requirements engineering process, it may, for example, not clear whether the system should implement certain function, for example, pay by credit card, or whether there is another system in the system context provide such function that should be used, for example, payment processing. So this situation lead to the vague separation whether the functions or the mentioned process just now have clear relation to the system to be developed. Therefore, it is normal to have grey zones during requirements engineering process because some information is not precisely defined until the end of the requirements engineering process. However, the larger size of grey zone will contribute to higher risk for the project. The third part of this topic too will introduce to you on how to document the system context. So how to describe system and its context? Software engineer practically use two different approaches in describing or document the system context documentation. First, we can use structured approach, for example, context diagram and data flow diagram. Another approach is basically based on object-oriented paradigm. Normally, we will use UML model, for example, 
use case diagram and class diagram to describe the system and its context. This slide presents the example of context diagram to visualize the system and context based on structured approach. This is an example of context diagram for ticketing sales system. There are three stakeholders, namely passenger, buyer, carrier, that interact directly with this ticketing sales system. The stakeholder is one of the system context object that being represented as entities in rectangle notation. The three entities are interfacing with the system where the business process and events occurred in this ticketing sales system being represented as data flow okay, using the arrow symbols. This slide presents the example of use case diagram to document system and context based on object-oriented approach for ticket machine system. Stakeholders are represented as actors using the stickman symbols. The system boundary represented as rectangle notation that provides the scope of these ticket machine functions. Example of business process in this system are represented by use cases using the oval notations. To summarize, this topic 2 provides concept on the system and its contact that should be observed during requirements elicitation activities. The requirement engineer should investigate and define all the relevant system context object which provide the information as references for the requirements of the proposed system to be developed. Apart from that, the areas of grey zones between the system and the context are acceptable during requirement engineering process. However, the grey zone should be resolved because the larger the grey zone, the higher risk it impacts towards the software project development.